When I was introduced to my first kindergarten class, even though kids were seated and quiet waiting for their teacher, the kids started crying and running. I was amazed and surprised. Later, I was told that kids had never seen a foreigner before, especially as I am dark. I could not teach that very day. I got very disturbed because it was my first time. Even though the owner called me the next day to come and teach, I resisted. However, I decided to give it another try. I went the next day and it got well. It continued to get well until it finally got better. Now the kids know me and can associate with me. Now they love me and I have a good time teaching them every day. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to teach a kindergarten or nursery as a foreigner or as somebody who has a dark skin. Guys, if you're enjoying my video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Subscribe because that's the only way you can support me. Now, let's get into the video. You should be that of a fun teacher. You should be somebody who should be a lot of fun. So you should have a lot of fun. You should love kids. If you are somebody who gets annoyed as a, at the least provocation, it's going to be a problem working in the kindergarten or a nursery. So the first step is that you should love kids. Now the second step of teaching and loving kindergarten kids is these kids have a very short attention span. And so for the kids to follow what you are teaching them, you should make it playful. Put everything that you do or you teach in a playful manner. Play with kids, sleep on the floor, let kids sleep on you, you know, and engage these kids in the activities they do. So if, for instance, these kids are playing with toys, you should also be playing with toys. Now, even when you are teaching them flashcards, you should teach them in a playful manner. Not that you you, you lift the flashcards and, and expect the kids to mesh it. No, it's not done that way. So, for instance, So you should always add a kind of, I mean, humor to what you are teaching to this case, and that will, that is what will provoke the case to bring out the real them, and then also try to, you know, joke or play with you. So to the kids, they are playing. So in teaching kindergarten or nursery kids, always make them feel that they are playing. Don't make them feel that they are learning. Once they get a sense that they are learning, ah, it's going to be boring for them. But they should always get a sense that they are playing. So for instance, when I'm teaching one, two, three, I mean, I, I, I have cones or I have cups that kids pick. So to them, they are picking cups, but they are learning. So you pick one, you say one, two, three. They feel they are playing, but to me, they are learning. So kindergarten always play through activities, always play through activities and games. So that's the, that's the other thing you should bear in mind. You always teach using games and activities, a lot of games and activities. In fact, for kindergarten, is mostly for activities and games, mostly. As well as when they wake up in the morning, going to school, they feel like they are going to play. They don't feel they are going to school. They feel they are going to meet their peers, they are going to meet their friends, they are going to meet their friend teacher. And that is what kicks them to go to school. Else every morning come to school, they will be crying. <laughs> I'm going to school. I'm going to school. That's it. That's just by the by. That's just by the by. Now, for non-native speakers, if you've been introduced to a new kindergarten or nursery class, this is the trick for you, a, a kindergarten teacher who is a foreigner or you are dark. You are somebody with dark skin like myself. These are the tricks. So, if you're a dark teacher or if you're a foreign teacher, very white and you're in Asia, you know, Asia's white color is different from a very white teacher from Canada or America. It's a very different. So they see you, they don't come close to you. Even if they, you are still white, you are a foreigner. And so if you are going to teach a kinder class, you should enter that particular class in style. You should enter the class in style. So you don't all of a, uh, all of a sudden move like when you've been introduced to grade five and then you express it to 
kids to sit quietly and then you tell them my name is teacher Philemon what is my name or uh, I'm from no it doesn't work like that so you should you should you should you should enter the class in style hello hey my friend yeah my friend hello hello for instance you can go through the window and you can you know go to the class come out go to the class come out like you are playing with them and they will notice how is that trying to play with us and you catch their attention and you see that all of them will want to see the teacher who is coming and by so doing some of them will start coming to you and they will fall in love with you trust me if you don't do this and you move from where you are going to and enter the class boom all the kids are going to shout all the kids are going to scream i mean you ask them to mention a particular thing yeah they won't mind you and they will start crying so that's the first trick enter your classes style two on your first day of going to teach it should not it should not necessarily be a lesson on your first day you won't get to teach so your first day is when you get to create a rapport with the kids It's when you get to befriend the kids so on your first day you go with a lot of uh, toys the puppet on the first day you go with a puppet toys stickers candies so for instance if you are teaching hello hello what's your name most of the kids who will sing, you give them stickers so that it motivates other kids to also follow suit. Else, all the kids are intentionally going to cry, they are going to run away, or they are going to, they are going to shout. In the first day, don't force the kids to recite after you what you tell them. Don't. Just, just let them be in their comfort zone. Just play with them. If they are playing, play. And be the center of attraction so that the kids can look at you and love you and come and play with you. And then you can also, I mean, lift them up. You can, I mean, touch them, give them stickers, use the puppet, use toys. So the first day shouldn't be official learning. Two, if you're a non-native teacher, or let's say if you're a black teacher, or let's say if you're a foreign teacher, very white, on the first day, don't be too surprised if the kids cry and run away. It can happen to you, it happened to me. So on the first day, all the kids can be crying. I remember my first day, I went with my uh, my teacher who actually introduced me and all the kids were crying. Everybody was crying. Even those who were not crying, they wouldn't respond to what I was saying. Hello, okay, they won't mind me. And almost half of the class were crying. Just crying here and there. And I went to touch some of the kids and it got them annoyed. They started crying even louder. <laughs> so as in your first time, don't expect to have a positive feedback. But in case you have a negative feedback, like you have other kids crying and making noise and running like that, don't be too surprised. You haven't gotten used to you. So once you go there twice, the third time, the kids are going to get used to you. There, you can start whatever you want to start. The next point now, when you get used to the kids and other kids know you, the next thing is that you should establish a regular routine. A regular routine. And most of this regular routine is what you do every day and the kids are going to get used to this because because these are very young kids and kindergarten and toddlers you don't expect them to produce what you teach them in a day instead you should have an introductory song so for instance when i go to my class the first thing is hello hello what's your name hello hello now with time once i get into the class the kids will start to recite hello hello what's your name now the next thing I do is uh, anytime I come, I play walking, 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 hop, 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 running, running, running. So because I play this and this has become used with the kids, anytime I get to the class, the kids will start singing, walking, walking. And I, I, I actually walk. When it's time to walk, I walk. When the song is saying walk, I walk with the kids. So with time, kids get to understand what is walk in English. Kids get to understand what is hop in English. Kids get to understand what is run in English. Kids get to understand what is swim. Swimming, swimming, swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. And so they get to know what is swimming. And so with time, you tell them to swim and they'll be swimming. You tell them to run and they'll be running. And the next thing is, I introduce a song which has to do 
which has to do with sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. So singing the song and doing the actions, they get to know. And that is it. The next thing is TPL. TPL is total physical response. Total physical response. It's very important too for Asian kids and kids teaching second language. So anything you teach kids should come with actions. Anything should come with actions. So for instance, if you are teaching kids um, sit down, don't just sit down and then they say sit down in words. No, sit down. So you do this. Sit down. So kids will know that anytime you do sit down, you mean they should sit down. Stand up. Stand up. And let kids do this. Because once they get to do this, they get to know that, okay, so sit down and sit down. Stand up and stand up. And they'll get used to it. So TPL is very important. Total physical response. If you are teaching kids swimming, I can swim. I can swim. Let them swim. So they know that this is swimming or this is swimming. So anytime they get to meet swimming, they know that you're talking about this swimming or this swimming. And so total physical response is very important. If you are teaching them eat, I can eat. I can eat. I can drink. So anytime I go to my class, the first thing, hello class, how are you class? I'm fine. What can I do? What can I do? I can eat. What can I do? I can drink. What can I do? I can swim. I can ride my bike. So TPL, kids get to know this vocabulary because of the TPL. Because one thing you should know about um, kindergarten is kindergarten means that children in the garden. Kindergarten, yes, children in the garden. And so basically when children are in the garden, they are in the garden to play. And so your teaching methodologies should involve a lot of playing, a lot of singing, a lot of uh, TPL and things that can get them, things and activities that can get them into the mood. So basically, you make kids feel that they are in to play. They are in the garden to play, not in the garden to learn. Because once they get a sense that they are there to learn, that will be wahala for you. But when they feel that they are there to play, anytime you come, they are so happy, they welcome you, and it moves like that. So you find my content very useful. I spend a lot of time gathering this information and content. It costs me a lot, but just for you. What you can do to support me is to subscribe on my uh, link, like, comment, and share it to your friends. That is how come you can also support me to do more of such videos. Guys, thank you for liking and commenting on my video and subscribing. It's a, a wrap and a bye for today.